Hello, everybody, and welcome to the, I assume, well, one of the last podcasts we're doing. This is, I mean, today's the last recording session. But, yeah, sorry to date this. I keep doing that. I keep dating every video. Today I am joined by Matthew, and we're going to be talking about the Bethesda conference. So, I mean, I, from, this is one of the most interesting pod, in, in, not in podcasts, interesting um, conferences that was at the show this year. I really enjoyed this one, but I feel like not much was actually shown. I don't know. Yeah, I I have a different, kind of a different viewpoint on this one. Yeah, it's, it, I think this was very divisive. Like I saw. Yeah. But yeah, this um, when we because we're on kind of a tight schedule, we're gonna just like open like jump into it. Um, this opened with a live music performance, which happened quite a lot <laughs> this E three. Um, it it did surprisingly weirdly. Like, I I thought they'd learn by now that like maybe we don't want to see that, but it happened a lot. You're right. I think we've had four. I think this year. Um, yeah, that was a weird amount, but this was I think presumably the main theme of Rage Two, done by a band. I don't know what the name of the guy was. Oh, I know he's the host of Destroy Build Destroy. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that guy was I when when this when this opened, I remember like my thought at the time was I was frustrated that it was happening because I was thought I thought this podcast I not I keep on calling it a podcast. I thought this conference was gonna be really short, but it definitely wasn't. It was quite long. So my my what like at the at the time I hated this point, but I sort of I sort of I sort of kinda like it now because all these musical performances are just funny to me they're funny when you look back on them but when you're watching them live you're just like can can you like get to the conference yeah i had to like i found it really frustrating and then the next thing i found even more frustrating and it was this isn't actually the trailer we're getting into but when the devs came out i th i believe there was two of them like one really tall guy one kind of short guy um and they were talking about i think it was rage 2 it was really awkward because I think, like, they were waiting for a response from the audience, like, everything they said. Yeah. And it was like... It, I remember that, yep. Like, every sentence they wanted a response, <laughs> and then there was, like, this really awkward silence, and it was just... Oh, it was... it was. I don't know if it was intentionally, like, cringy. maybe they did it on purpose, but I don't think they would have. I don't know. But I think... Yeah, that, I don't know. The Bethesda one was meant to be kind of edgy, wasn't it? Because they had... Todd Howard called the fans degenerates, and and also like I don't know there was just some stupid stuff that happened in this one, but it, there was it's weird weird how Bethesda likes to do this I don't know why they like to make eccentric different types of shows it's weird last year I really enjoyed Bethesda's conference I thought it was done really well and then this year I don't have that same opinion I remember I don't know if it was last year or the year before but I found. One of the Bethesda conferences they did was really bad. I think it was the year before, where it was really short, and it, they just showed one game. And Last I, year they did something like Bethesda Land or whatever, and it was like a little amusement park, and they oh, did a couple yeah. games. I remember there was a lot that. of VR shown last year. Yeah, because Skyrim VR and Fallout PC VR. and More Skyrim. Yeah, even more Which, Skyrim. Speaking Which... of more Skyrim, yeah. uh, we got we got to talk about something else. Yeah, we got it. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, but th that was an interesting. If I remember, that was my uh, that was my highlight of the conference. It was the, it was the Skyrim. But yeah, then we went into after this live performance and after the devs came out, they showed us a Rage Two story trailer. Um, I really liked Rage One, because it was really underrated and nobody really played it, and it was it was kind of a fun shooter. It was what? Yeah, yeah sorry, carry on. Um, no, you keep going. Uh, so it, it, it was what re do, do you know Doom like the twenty sixteen one? It was very reminiscent yeah. of that before that was a thing. So this is like a really fast paced shooter, which I don't know. It seems ragey. Uh, it kind of looks the same. I don't know like, what your thoughts were on this trailer as a whole? Because it was quite long. It was. The problem is, I never played the original Rage, 
Yeah. So, I it, can't comment on that. It's, um... Yeah, I, I don't think very few people did, I remember. But, uh... Bethesda has a lot of shooters, so, like, they're all kind of blending together in my mind. Yeah, this, if this I remember to correctly, it did, look, it looked cool. It, Probably not something I'm going to pick up, but maybe if I find it in a bargain bin, I'll pick it up. Yeah. Like, something like that. Like, it looks good, just not for me. There was there was a lot of shooters this conference. Like I didn't. There was. I when when you look through like the the list of stuff that was shown, I think eighty percent of it is shooters, and it's weird. Yeah, probably. But they, the, I think the gameplay they chose was a really really good set of gameplay too. They did like a because at the time we'd only seen EA and Microsoft. And the note I put, the note I put was EA take notes because I thought the anthem showing was awful, but like this was, I thought this was a really good gameplay demo. It like really the the game. I don't know. I I don't really have much else to say because there's that's pretty much all you can say about Rage. It's yeah. Rage. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it, it was cool. I don't. We still don't have a release date. Yeah, I'll have to like see more of it, more trailers before I like form like a big opinion on it. But it looked it looked decent. Yeah, I don't know when we'll see it next. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I, a lot of games, I don't know when we're gonna see next. Like, this is off topic. Uh, I think you already did the Sony podcast. Oh uh, yeah, we did. That's fine. Like Last of Us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that doesn't have a date. We we'll probably won't. See, I'm guessing we won't see like games like that until like PS5. I have a feeling that. I've, my theory is that The Last of Us 2 will end the PS4. That's That works, too. That's like, a good one. I think it will finish the PS4, and that would kind I'd of make argue sense. It's, yeah, because I'd argue it's one of Sony's biggest titles. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I think it's on. It's up there with... Well, I guess now it's up there with... Well, what other massive PlayStation <laughs> IPs are there? Uncharted. God of God of War. Yeah, God of War's become massive because of this like really good new game. Yeah. But yeah, um, we're, we're getting completely off topic. But yeah, yeah back on topic. Um, next up was a card game called Elder Scrolls Legends. I knew this existed. I've never played it. Um, I I did not. This... But I'm also not big on card games, so. I I'm I'm actually the complete opposite. I love card games, but I just didn't play this for some reason. Um. I, well, the news was this is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, and it's getting a complete graphical overhaul. So, it's essentially a new game. Yeah, it's a card game. It's apparently, they, they're quite cocky saying it was the best card game ever made. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know. It's, uh, this was, a, this was like an Elder Scrolls block. I don't know what you thought of, like, this particular announcement. Uh, well, Elder Scrolls is another one that I'm going to get hate in the comments for, most likely. I have never played the Elder Scrolls, and I've never even played Skyrim, which is very hard to believe, I know. But, yeah, I've never played any of the Elder Scrolls games. So for this, it was just like, oh, this is just another card game for me. Yeah. I, I can see how people can get excited over it, especially because it's coming to Switch. Because, like, it's really, a, cool a lot of these announcements... There weren't a lot for Switch from any other uh, developers. No. So, at least it's something. This, and also, I found Nintendo showing was kind of lacking, too. We'll get to that, trust me. We'll get um, to that, yeah. Um, next up was Elder Scrolls Online Somerset. Uh, this apparently came out last week. Um, Did not know that. I do not play ESO. I tried it when it first came out, and I hated it. So I sold it, like, day one. Um, it, it's just not my type of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. They showed a dungeon DLC called Wolf Hunter. Cool for people who want that. <laughs> it's more dungeons. Um, a lot of referencing to Elder Scrolls dungeons through this co through this conference too. Weirdly, um, and also a story DLC called Merkmire. The only Elder Scrolls game I've ever played is Skyrim, and I know nothing else. So <laughs> I have no knowledge of this. Apparently, it's I an Oblivion thing. I haven't even played Skyrim, so. I mean, I have literally no knowledge. I have an incredibly unpopular opinion. I think you should avoid it completely. Um, Skyrim? Yeah, I think you should just play. I mean, I'm assuming you have, but I just I'm assuming I think you should just try and try out Fallout Four instead. 
I think that is another game. one that I still have yet to get. I played like a little bit of it, but not enough to like form a good opinion on it. Yeah. But I do have an opinion on Fallout seventy six, which we'll get to. No, yeah, I'm I'm actually quite. I was I was excited, but my opinions changed a little bit. Um. Yeah, we have different opinions on that. I think. Yeah. Um. We'll we'll get to that. And then we went from Elder Scrolls Online Somerset into a, a, a well, God, why am I stuttering so much? A um announcement that I was really excited for because the original 2016 reboot Doom is one of my favorite modern like console games. This was a really uh-huh. cool little teaser, like a uh, no info really, just a cool just a cool teaser. Um, it was like hell on earth type thing. I assume this is based after the original Doom, like, reboot. I keep, I'm calling it original Doom, you know what I mean. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was just apparently more info to be revealed at QuakeCon in August. So, that's cool. This is Doom. this is something you're not interested in, I, from what I recall. Uh, yeah, I was just going to get into that. Doom is another game that, honestly, I have not played. Uh, Joshua, who was on another one of these podcasts... Yeah. I'll uh, that in he, the corner. he played the ori- or not the original, the remake of Doom. I think it's a remake, yeah, it a is. reboot, it's whatever a... you want to call it. He played that and he loved it, but like again, I was not. I'm never like, I'm not into shooters unless they like do something differently. So I never bothered to pick up this one, and I know I probably should because I know it has good reviews and whatnot. And I know people like it, and honestly, Doom Eternal does look fun. Like I'll probably eventually play that. But I should play the original one first, I'm guessing. Um, I don't think the plot matters too much, but... I mean, if if Eternal interests you more, get Eternal, but... Mm-hmm. Doom is kind of on everything at this point. It is. So... It's on my 3DS. <laughs> yeah. It's not a joke. I well, homebrew the 3DS oh. on Doom on it. <laughs> that's, that's cool, actually. That's the only version of Doom I played. Well, the original Doom on 3DS? Yes. <laughs> that, that's the new Doom 3D. Um, yeah. But yeah, next up after Doom, we got into a, again another shootery block. Wow, wow, there's so many shooters in a row. Um, then we got into Quake Champions, and another shooter. But this is like a more a shooter with more of a lineage, I guess, than other shooters. Um, Quake is quite a infamously popular shooter in the from the nineties, but. The host that came out, again, another example of, like, a cringy host that kind of ruined the showing. Um, he was, like, trying, wearing a baseball cap, trying to be cool and being <laughs> like, hey, guys, this is this game is kind of rad. Let's take a look at it. And it was just like, okay, thanks, guy. Um, but one thing that was really cool is that Quake Champions is free for everybody that downloads it this week and, get, and they get to keep it forever. So I should probably download that. <laughs> it it's apparently it's only on PC, which is disappointing. But oh. it's um yeah yeah it's I don't really know um they they did uh, sorry Ubisoft did a very similar thing where they did they gave For Honor away on UPlay because mm-hmm. they wanted more people to play it and me and Brand, me and Brandon made the joke that the crew two would be given away next year um, <laughs> because nobody's gonna buy it but. <laughs> I think I think Quake Champions looks cool. I have it downloaded. I've yet to play it. I probably will at some point. But yeah, that's next up. After that, I don't actually. Well, I sorry, I forgot to ask your opinion on it. On uh, Quake, I've never played the original, and it do, it does look looks all right. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. But I don't know. I probably won't bother playing that one. That's one of the ones that didn't really stick out to me. It's one of those. Shooters with like really like hyper over the top physics, mm-hmm. where you like where when you shoot somebody they ragdoll across the room and it's kind of like oh, ridiculously over the top. And also Doom Guy is in this one, so <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, next up is a game which I bought when I got my graphics card last year, and it's called Prey. Um, I've heard mixed reactions for Prey. I was really interested initially, and I'm gonna be honest. I um, I've had it, I've had it on my PC downloaded since last August. Haven't played it. Um, it's getting a free update, I guess. Um, with New Game Plus, which I guess 
every game is getting these days, because God of War got it too. Um, and a survival mode. I think the survival mode is just... This is separate from the DLC they talked about. It was kind of confusing. Because um, they talked about survival mode, and they immediately went into the DLC, which is also a survival mode. Mm -hmm. And this DLC is called Moon Crash. Um, apparently, this is my quote, is it's it's a harsher take on the game with a constantly changing map and loot drops seemingly procedurally generated. So, yeah, that's, I, th I thought there was more after that. There isn't. Um, so, it's just like, I guess like a, just a, sort of like wave zombie type thing, but in Prey. And cool for people who like Prey, there's not many. Yeah. It's, it's a game that intrigues me and I still want to play, but yeah, I don't really know. Like, I like the plot of it from what I've heard, but I just never got around to playing it after seeing the mixed reactions. Yeah. But honestly, the other mode they showed off, which is, um, what is it? Oh, uh, Prey like Typhon little, Hunter. Yeah, like the little prop, uh, prop hunt mode. Looks kind of fun. Yeah. So, maybe if the game's cheap, I'll pick it up. It's, it's um, it's seemingly got, like, more of a focus on you become the object, and you have to, like, mm -hmm. stay still and, like, keep your breathing, and, like, it's it meant to be, like, a little bit more of a serious take on prop hunt, but still cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, this game... That game looks great. Next up, we go on to something which I hate to admit, but I have zero interest in. Um, this was one of the only Switch announcements this entire conference, and it was the Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, and it was just a release date, which we finally know is June 29th. I thought it already had one for the Switch. Did it not already have a release date? I'm pretty sure Nintendo confirmed it a while ago, and that was just a good recap. Oh, maybe it was then. I just put release date June 29th, so maybe it was already a thing. If it was... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was, because I remember... Sorry, I just dropped a water bottle cap. Uh, um, I remember they confirmed that a while ago, and I've never played the original Wolfenstein. It's another one that I haven't played the original, but I am interested in picking this one up, mainly because it's on the Switch, and because it can be portable, and it looks fun. This is one of the ones that actually does look kind of fun to me. I, so I might pick this one up. I was one. I was somebody that played Wolfenstein: The New Order when it came out. I really enjoyed it, but for some reason, I don't want to play a sequel, and I don't really know why. Uh -huh. Like, they just seem kind of similar. Like, I've already had the experience. I don't know. Yeah, like if a sequel doesn't do anything new, I could see why you feel that way. Yeah, and like then they announced a spin-off title called Wolfenstein: Young Blood. This, I mean. Again, this one this one interests me for one main reason, but I'll let you go first. It's yeah, I, I think we have the exact same reason. This is in, this isn't interesting because it's a spin-off or because it's based off of the main character's twin daughters in the eighties. This is interesting because it's a co-op game. Yep. <laughs> because exactly, they they've designed a Bethesda shooter to be entirely co-op, but it's also available solo swapping between the characters. And now. Swapping between characters is a thing that I am not a fan of. I'd much it. rather play that with someone. Yeah. Like, what? What was the other one? Unravel 2, again, yeah. going off topic. That one has swapping characters. I can't, I feel like I couldn't play a game like that alone. I'd have to play with someone. It, it, same it with would frustrate one. me. Like It would. It would. It's the same as Snipperclips. Playing that on your own is boring. Oh, yeah. That'd be awful. <laughs> it's like... I, I, I can't imagine playing through the entirety of Snipperclips on your own. Like, I don't get it. It's again. It looks fun. It's a co it's a co op game. No release date. Again, common theme here. Um, so that was yeah. That was a lot. Young Blood. I mean, I'm probably not gonna buy it. Mainly because it has Wolfenstein in the title, and I feel guilty about saying that. But yeah. Next up, apparently, well, we didn't know. Oh no, sorry. This is a separate announcement. Prey Typhon Hunter was announced for VR. That's the cool part of it, I find. Like, prop hunt in VR is a really cool concept. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. They also announced a Prey single-player experience in VR. That's going to be cool, but I don't have a VR. <laughs> and the third and final Wolfenstein announcement of the day, Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot, which is a VR game. Um, I don't have a VR 
I don't think these will be available on PlayStation VR. So I don't VR know. VR is um it's it's a weird it's weird. Because like it's a little expensive for games like this, I feel. I feel like games like that are made for VR usually aren't as high quality as like normal games, and I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion. No, I don't think it is. Like I'm pretty sure it's just like a it, it's it's the, the VR is like plagued with like very meh games. Yeah. So it like I had a PlayStation VR for literally, I think, two weeks because Joshua got one, and he he sold it because there wasn't a lot at the time. There was nothing to do. Yeah. So, I think if VR ever goes down in price, I'll get one and pick up maybe like Fallout VR, whatnot, stuff like that. But right now, VR games, I don't have an interest in them. Like at the moment, I think because of this Days of Play sale, the PlayStation VR at least is down to two hundred dollars. But I still think that's too See, much. That's a good deal. I, I think that's too much still. Because... Well, I feel like anything lower is, like, really cheap. Yeah. Like, 150 that's, like, that would be a steal, I believe. I think, like, I think the argument of it, 200 being too much, is because it doesn't come with the move controllers. Oh, yeah, see, we bought the one that came with that. Yeah. So, the, yeah, the thinking, move controllers are so expensive. Like, the move controllers on their own are $90. Yeah, I so, know. So like that's what two ninety immediately, <laughs> which I still think is too much. Um, Skyrim VR is another game I want to play in VR because I I mean it's Skyrim's really simple, so playing it in There's, VR would be fun. There, there are games that seem like a lot of fun in VR, like a little more fun than just sitting on a couch playing with a controller. But also, you need a giant room for VR. I have a tiny room, so probably not. Good yeah. Even. When we were playing with the PSVR in Joshua's room, he has a bed like right behind his PlayStation. Yeah. So it was it was awful controlling that thing. So that was another reason why we didn't keep it. I I'm I'm like considering not getting one. I kind of want to get a Vita instead and just like get like a Japanese orange one instead. But I don't know. Vitas have some good games. They have a couple of good games. Again, it's the issue of like a couple really good ones and then plagued with a bunch of like meh stuff. You can also get PS1 games on there too, and yeah, at least I think you could get them in the UK, probably. I think so. See why not? I think that but might yeah, be I, like I used to use my Vita for Netflix, and that's it. And then I realized you can get PS1 games, and I got a couple of those, and then I used it for Persona 4, and that's it. That's all I've used my Vita for. That's probably all I would use it for. All the Persona games, and I do want to play some like really rare PS1 games, like Suikoden and stuff. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll get around to it probably. And also those orange ones look really cool. <laughs> but Oh yeah, I like color systems a lot more than just plain white or black ones. Yeah. But they don't make them anymore, so... It's, uh, it's disappointing, because they're really expensive. I think the orange one is like $400 now. Um, yeah, that's a lot for a Vita. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Back on topic. Yeah, we, we, that was completely on topic. <laughs> um, next up, after Wolfenstein Cyberpilot... We went into Skyrim Very Special Edition, because Todd Howard came out, he did like a joke thing where he was like... Hey, what's the guy's Todd Howard here. Oh, there we go. It's Brennan. <laughs> alright, alright, all right. I'm, here, I'm here to talk about, the, about, about Epic Skyrim Special Edition. Okay. Uh, what special guest, randomly appearing. It was randomly appearing, right, Brandon Bees. <laughs> there he is. Um, but, yeah, this Todd Howard came out and did, and did the joke of like, you're all waiting to see where we put Skyrim next, and... They announced, did like a, a joke announcement, which is actually a real thing. Um, yes, it is. Sky, right now. Skyrim on Echo devices. And I have it on mine. I ha My I Echo is down to his. I wait, haven't done wait. it yet. Um, uh, I would, Brandon, but I'm outside. I'm filming all this outside. Oh. But <laughs> I didn't know. Fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. That's a. Uh, I, I have no idea. But yeah, after. Uh, Hopefully you don't hear any weed, uh, wind or whatever. I, it <laughs> I like any weed. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you just don't hear any weeds. Um, after the Echo announcement, we went into an Etch-A-Sketch joking announcement, a Motorola Pager joking announcement, and my personal highlight, a Samsung Smart Refrigerator announcement. I Imagine actually playing Skyrim on that. Probably wouldn't be too hard. I'm um, pretty it sure was, probably not. It's um yeah, I like I like this. It was really self aware. Like it's cool when companies do this sometimes. But after this 
after Skyrim Very Special Edition, we went into the massive 25 minute showcase of Fallout 76. Yeah, Which, I should talk about this one. This one was definitely my favorite uh, announcement of the conference, I'd say. Yeah, it, I, I agree. Even from someone who hasn't really played Fallout, just it, 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 it was revealed very well. Yeah. And it was shown off very well. Um, and the main feature, which we'll get into, I like, but I know you don't. I will get into that. I'm a little bit bothered by it, but I don't think it's going to stop me from playing it. Um, mm -hmm. Like, well, we started. The thing that Bethesda does really well with Fallout is its presentation. Like, wow! I thought the way this game was revealed and the way they had the cut-ins of like the Vault Tech clips and stuff, I thought it was really, really like concise and it showed what we needed to see. Um, at the time, Todd Howard was kind of ambiguous about this because I don't think he was. He, he wanted to like. I don't. I think Bethesda were like trying to like walk on eggshells about this but they announced that it's fully online and at the time they said it has the option to be single player what that means is it has the option to be solo inside of a multiplayer world you have to be in which a multiplayer is, world you have to be on single player that is it's yeah it's multiplayer but you play on your own like it's like saying gta online is single player but it's just because you're playing on your own <laughs> it's the exact same thing but this yeah. game is running on the exact same engine, however, there's a new lighting engine. That's why it looks better. Um, I do think this game looks gorgeous. It's uh, one of those games that doesn't look graphically amazing, but it still looks really pretty. Um, Bethesda's got like a knack for that. They don't quite catch up with graphics, but they do make them look polished as hell. Uh -huh. um, I thought, my favourite part of any of these Fallout trailers, and I, I do love this, is that when they initially reveal the game, the game, when they show the original Fallout 1 power armor, like, looking out on the horizon, and then the, like, the bomb taking him away, and you just see the parts and the remnants of the suit on the floor. Like, mm -hmm. and, but, like, the, the stuff that was important that we got into with Fallout 76 was, new mechanics-wise, there was this ability where you can set up bases anywhere. I think that's... That is my favorite part. It's really cool because it. For one main reason, we'll get into it. It's um yeah, and also one of the massive re really cool ideas of this, is that enemies can destroy your settlements. Like anyone can. Anyone can absolutely and anyone. That's my favorite part. You I, can, I like you can I like just... get a nuke and nuke other players. Yeah, you can go find nuclear launch. Codes. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a, you, yeah. You can find codes and you can either work as a team or work on your own to get nuclear codes, which seemingly when you kill somebody who's holding one, they'll drop the code. So then you can put the code together and send a nuclear, like a nuclear bomb on an area on the map. And then you can go to that area and there's higher level enemies who are more radiated and also give you much better loot drops. So like, it's kind of like an interesting take on I assume that there'll be replayability in nuking different places on the map and like seeing what what it's like when it's nuked. Uh huh. But yeah, you can definitely see how Fallout seventy six got to where Fallout four is in terms of plot, <laughs> because of all the yeah. nukes. But yeah, this I thought this game, I just really really enjoyed how they also yeah they officially announced it's a prequel to every Fallout game. Oh yeah, we, I was just gonna say we didn't even touch on that. Oh yeah, yeah it's a prequel. It's a prequel, and it's cool that it's a prequel, because I think that's interesting, at the very least. Um, now, there's one thing which, I know this is a very personal thing, but the big, big announcement that I loved about this was the Power Armor edition of the game. The, like, the edition of the game that literally comes with an actual wearable Power Armor helmet and a glow-in-the-dark map. And, like, these figurines that are based off of, like, 50s army figurines of irradiated enemies and, like, I don't know, like, super mutants and stuff. It looks really cool. Um, they show a little bit of gameplay of player versus player stuff and also player, player and player interaction. This game just looks awesome. I don't know what everybody else thinks. <laughs> Oh yeah, I definitely think it's uh, my favorite oh, yeah. game of the conference. Yeah, it was my oh, highlight. Oh yeah, well, I think it's amazing. I'm definitely gonna buy it. Yeah, 
It's this, a, is a, this is one that I'll definitely pick up. This is a game I'm considering pre-ordering for the beta too. Like. Oh yeah, I forgot they're doing beta. Yeah, I, I forgot to say that. Yeah, this, yeah, if you pre-order this game before November fourteenth, you get access to a beta. But I don't know how long, when it is, or how long it is. Is it for digital pre-orders only, or can I? No, get no, it's 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 for physical too. You get sent a uh, email code for the beta if you buy it physically. Oh. I'll go pre-order at GameStop soon. I'm, I kind of want to pre-order the Power Armor <laughs> one. It's two hundred dollars. Yeah, I know, but it looks cool. Will you at least wear it all the time? No, I'll just have it on my shelf and then never touch it again. <laughs> like every collectible item I own. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, I thought I, I think we don't really have much else to say because I only have positive things to say, other than my main issue here. Is I feel like the online only aspect might take away from the plot a bit, and it might make it less of a Fallout experience and more of a quick hide hide because this guy has like the best sniper in the game <laughs> and is sniping everyone across the map and it's really frustrating. Let's load into another server and then the exact same quick. thing happens. Or, quick hide! This guy has the new code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or in chat somebody's like. Like free le free best gear loot. Come here, like the like the hackers in GTA Five who like drop weapons from the sky and have infinite money glitches, but have it in Fallout. I guarantee that'll happen. Oh yeah, it's um eventually it will. And then Todd Howard will will come in and be like, he'll scream. I think he probably would. <laughs> yeah, next after um seventy six is the. They announced Fallout Shelter is coming to PS4 and Nintendo Switch, and it's available. And it was available right now at the time. It's Fallout Shelter. It's a mobile game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much all we could say. I never played the mobile game. I'm never gonna play this one either. <laughs> I, I I played the mobile game for an hour when it came out, and thought, "This is Fallout Shelter." Okay. And then I uninstalled the app. <laughs> that was kind of. Oh. Mobile games are weird when they make them, like when big companies make them. Yeah. I I don't last long with them. Like, I just I just went back to playing Pocket Camp like two days ago because of the fact that we didn't get new Animal Crossing. I didn't even go back to it. I played it like. I just, yeah, I just went back. I was craving something, so I just went. I've been playing that for a little bit now, but any other mobile game that any big studio has made, I haven't touched since it released. Yeah, I can. It's the same here. Fire Emblem Warriors was the one that kept me going, but it wasn't. I wasn't playing it. I was just doing my summons. Mm -hmm. so that's all I was doing. But after Fallout Shelter, we got into a mo into a mobile game that's really interesting because it's not really another one. Yay! Yeah, it's not. It wasn't really a mobile game, and this is Elder Scrolls Blades, and everybody was real. Did you hear like the crowd go like, hmm, when they hit when they oh, saw yeah. this because they thought it was the new Elder Scrolls, and then. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's a mobile game, and it's like Todd Howard is like, you can play it in portrait mode, and it's just like, oh, one-handed, <laughs> and it was just, and he calls us degenerates. Um, but yeah, this this is a mobile game. However, this game is planned for every single platform, so I don't understand why you'd want to play Blades on a PS4 because it seems like it's going to be really bare bones. But this is all. This you is. You can't lose them in the consoles too. That's really strange. Yeah, this is yeah. This is being crossplay across all mobile devices, all VR like devices. Crossplay. No, no, every every VR device from like bottom tier to top tier. So from Samsung that Gear VR, Google Cardboard. Awesome. Well, I mean it, it. I mean I have a Gear VR and it doesn't look terrible, but. It's um obviously it's not not comparable to anything else. Well, compared to like the other versions. Oh, oh, of course, it, yeah. But I'm saying that they have to. That's why the game's gonna be, an on an engine that can run all these different devices, and it's gonna go from Gear VR up version. to Oculus Rift, and they they're gonna have a Switch release, I think, um, a PS4, Xbox One release, and a PSVR release, and yeah. It's... Is there going to be a refrigerator release, please? No, I don't think so, sadly. Um, Damn it. There's going to be procedurally generated dungeons and also some handcrafted dungeons, which means that we're going to develop three and then we're going to do set. We're going to have like. Then you're going to have to just play the random stuff and it's going to be glitchy. <laughs> it's. 
It's free. You you had to you were able to pre-order it for your phone, even though it's free. Yeah. Weird. I don't get that at all. Weird decision. All right, let's do this right now. I've I've already pre-ordered it. Um. Yeah, it gets a fall release. That's just a window. Cool, I guess. It's I'm never gonna play it. I can yeah. already guarantee I will never play it. I don't know if anybody else will. Any mobile I'll game. I probably won't play. Yeah, I think that's kind of. And then we got into the. Oh, there, there we go. There's Brandon's downloads. Um, <laughs> you just heard it. Yeah. Um, but next up, they were like, "We're gonna, we're gonna show us your, our next game, which is a next gen game, and it's a new IP, and it's called Starfield." And that's it. That's it. They show it was. A, oh it, hell yeah, dude! My Garfield space game. It was. It was a. Uh, oh, Starfield, because Garfield. Yeah, funny. Um, it was seemingly a uh, star, like a like a just like a I don't know, like a shooting star, and then a black hole opened and swallowed it. Um, and, and then we saw Garfield come out of the black hole saying, "Hey, hey, hey, where's my lasagna?" Yeah, that that, that is exactly what happened. The trailer that you are seeing on screen right now, that's what happened. You, if, if you don't see that, it just means you're blind. It's, it's that, that is what happened. Um, but, yeah, that was Starfield. Any, anybody have any other thoughts other than it's Starfield? Nope. Because, yeah. <laughs> I hope it's good. Not really much to think about. Game. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, I don't know. It might be good. I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I trust in Bethesda to make a great game. Me too, yeah. I haven't played much Bethesda. The only like, game I haven't played I, a lot like, of their I games, but I trust like it. Five hours of Skyrim, like two hours of Doom, but, yeah, but I can already tell their games are quality. The next title show Their biggest yet is the next title. This so. this was when Todd Howard was like, but we're gonna be we're gonna show you a sneak peek of the next game after Starfield, which means this is probably coming out in ten years. <laughs> and like People are like, oh my god, Todd Howard, I can't believe he announced it. But I mean, at least it's a logo, I guess. This was Elder Scrolls VI. And... Finally, we're out, we're out of Skyrim, Skyrim, pal. What about Skyrim 2? Yeah, is this called Elder Scrolls VI Skyrim 2? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the Skyrim 2. Oh, I mean, I, I kind of wish that Elder Scrolls, it was called Elder, Elder Scrolls VI Despacito, but... Just so we had some sort of Despacito 2 and reveal at E3. But yeah, that yeah, was. Twenty nineteen, man. I mean, the El seeing the Elder Scrolls theme like remixed into a new theme after all these years, after eight years, it it was it was cool. Um, I thought this was a good way to close out the show. It left people happy. Um, I don't. There's not much to say on it because it's just a logo. It's just a logo, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was Bethesda's E three conference. What was everybody's closing thoughts on it? Look, I came in around the star. I, I look, Skyrim Mobile. It's not. I, I think Big Little Blades is Skyrim Mobile. It pretty much is Skyrim Mobile, yeah. Uh, and Echo, Echo Skyrim, best announcements, of course. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in playing Starfield and uh, and what was it? Star uh, Fallout. Fallout 76, yeah. Yeah, Fallout 76. And, anyway. I mean, they, to be fair, they did take the 76. From my name? Yeah. Uh, they, were, they, they were, like, looking frenzy. It's a bit like Fallout. They were watching my YouTube channel. Yeah, they were. Fallout 76. They were, they were looking at your PS4 collection video, and they were like, that's the name. That's it. <laughs> it has nothing to, do, it had nothing to do with Vault 76. It was just like, that's the name. But... 76. Well, they better give Matthew a role in Fallout 76. I'll be pissed. This yeah, is, come on, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send this. We'll send this to Todd Howard now. You could reach out to me <laughs> on my Twitter, and I'll throw it on the screen right now. Todd Howard, <laughs> there you go. Um, Todd Howard, if you're watching this, here you go. <laughs> there, you, there you go. It's the ball is in your court. Um, but yeah, star ratings. Let's go through everybody's star ratings on this one. Um, I'm gonna say three and a half. Um, when I did this. I gave it a lot more than I think it deserves credit for. I think I'm gonna give it a four, which is very well, high. 
thinking about it, I'd argue it was like my probably my fourth favorite conference. So maybe like a three and a half too, like Brandon. Yeah, I think around that's fair. There, I'd, I'd say. I think mine sits around three and a half and four because yeah, there was a lot of stuff I didn't like, but there was also a lot of stuff then, I did. And the stuff that we did like really good stuff too. Yeah, like. For me, it was Doom Eternal, Fallout 76, and then the little teases of the other two games. And also, Rage 2 looked kind of fun. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I, I'm going to say on 4. I thought it was okay. I mean, I thought it was great, actually, but... I think my opinion on this is higher because of how bad Ubisoft and yeah. <laughs> EA did. And I was, like, thinking, well, why would I not give it... Why would I give this any... Like, why, why shouldn't I give this more than the other two? <laughs> because they showed Skull and Bones for 15 minutes that we didn't see. We saw Fallout 76 for 25. Wow, I mean, we, if you want to hear how much I hated Skull and Bones, go watch the Ubisoft one. But yeah. He loves Skull and Bones. Spoiler alert. He loves it so much. It's to me his favorite game. It's, uh, I, next year. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna. I'm, I'm so excited that I almost pulled my hair out. But yeah, when it comes out, someone hit hit him up with a download code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'll do a review of it. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining me on this um, Bethesda conference. Where can people find you on the internet? All right, they can find me uh, on Twitter at Sonic Frenzy seventy six, which is on the or on right YouTube. Now. Also on YouTube at Sonic Frenzy seventy six, but also at Sonic Frenzy Gaming. Either channel, depending which one you want to go yeah. to. Well, Choose your you favorite. Epic find all, me. all the links are. Um... Oh, sorry, Brandon. Carry on. <laughs> completely. Epic, <laughs> epic at Brandon sixty five on Twitter. Better, it's, it's something. It's a it's a Twitter. Yeah, I mean, we we showed Mitchell's. We we plugged Mitchell's Twitter in the last episode, and he was in it for literally thirty seconds. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll put. All the channel links in the description. I'll put all the Twitter handles and all the everything is on screen. And there's Look, Shigeru Miyamoto's face is there. Yes, I did say that right. Shigeru, Mi Shigeru Miyamoto's face is there. As he always has been. Um, uh, can you change it to Todd Howard? For the oh, yeah, I will, please? actually. Never mind. It's Todd Howard. Well, actually, no. It was Shigeru Miyamoto until Brandon reminded me that. Now it's Todd Howard. Um, and you know who it is now? It's the host of Destroy Build. Oh my god! Check him out. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <hilarious. Hey. laughs> don't don't keep changing this. Uh, and then now 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 it's uh, Betty White. Oh, oh okay. And we're gonna end it there. All right. We're gonna stay on Betty. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for. Uh, <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me, and we will see you in Nintendo because we're gonna record oh, that. It's the Lorax now. Oh oh. In the Vito. All right. All right. All right, we'll see you in the next video. I'm trying to end it as fast as possible so you don't get any more faces. Bye. Uh, Bye.